afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another NICER National Institute for Congestion Reduction a webinar. Um, it is my pleasure to welcome each of you today and to welcome our presenter. Let me tell you a little bit more about um, Daniel. Daniel is a has a PhD and is an associate professor of civil engineer at the University of Puerto Rico, Mayaguez. His main research interests interests are in the areas of transportation network design and travel demand management. He is currently working on projects related to parking management strategies, transit network design, the accessibility of micro, uh, micro, micro mobility services, and demand forecasting in dockless e-scooters. Um, he has previously worked on models for design of road pricing schemes as, and on freight travel demand forecasting. With that, it is my pleasure um, to hand the presentation over to Daniel. So Daniel, uh, take it away. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you everyone for attending this presentation. Today, we will be talking about the optimization of traffic transit networks and service areas to improve equity and service efficiency. Uh, this work was completed in collaboration with Alberto Figueroa, Carlos del Valle, and an undergraduate student, Jose Lopez. Today, I will present the objectives of our study the motivations of motivating problems that inspire this work. Then I will present the problem formulations, heuristics that we developed to find solutions to the problems that we propose, to the design problems that we propose. And then we will illustrate the application of the models and the approaches that we present um, using some numerical examples. And then I will offer closing remarks. This work is part of the NICER project titled Optimizing Service Areas to Address, to Reduce, sorry, to Reduce Congestion and Enhance Equity in Access to Transportation Systems. And the main objectives of this project are to formulate spatial optimization models that consider geometric and coverage areas characteristics of transportation service areas in the process of designing services to develop heuristics that address these type of problems, and then to apply them to two types of design problems, the design of service areas for transit and for e-scooters, or more generally, micromobility. So first, I will show you two problems that inspired our work. First, paratransit service areas and the ADA. By ADA, I mean the American with Disabilities Act, which is a federal law that mandates that services that operate fixed route systems must provide paratransit services in their service area. That's the general statute, the text of the American with Disability Act. Based on this law, there are federal regulations that specify exactly the extent or the coverage of the paratransit service area. As you see here, it's a federal regulation that within the corridor of a bus route, you must provide service area that has a width of three fourths of a mile. So if you apply this in to, and to illustrate, uh, you create a buffer around a area or around a service uh, network for a bus system. In this image, you see a line, a green line that represents a bus, a bus route. And then you also see a, an area, a blue area, that represents the minimum paratransit service region based on the three-fourths of a mile rule. And this is a very interesting requirement because it means that any time that a public agency is designing a bus network, they must consider also the design of the complementary paratransit service area, of the complementary paratransit service, and account that as part of their operating cost. Not only in the design of new system, but also if you are redesigning your system, if you are expanding the routes or you are producing routes, you must also take this into account, this requirement of a paratransit service area. 
And this creates some unique challenges, some interesting challenges for, 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 for transit uh, systems. In the US, at least, a bus service uh, agency must provide then different types of services, for example, fixed route and paratransit services, which, which, which serves different populations that have different needs and different priorities. And given a fixed budget, you can imagine that you could have competing objectives in the process of designing or operating your services. In this case, we're talking about fixed route versus a paratransit service. The second problem that interests us or that introduces us to the problem of service area design is the requirement of special inclusion in the operation of micromobility services. Uh, special inclusion and equity issues are fundamental in the US for the design of micromobility systems. For example, in the city of Chicago, the city ha had a pilot study or pilot um, experiment, you could say, where they define an area of concern or an area of interest because it contained populations that are historically disadvantaged. And then they established in that area a region of special requirements for the operating operators of the micromobility service. In general, we could say that cities are interested in micromobility service areas or MSAs, as I'm calling them here because they are a key feature that can be used to at least specially include disadvantaged communities. Naturally, micromobility operators are also very interested in the layout or the design of their service area as the, it has direct impact on the demand for their services. So given these two examples, um, we see that the design of service areas are is an interesting, uh, uh, relevant uh, question. So the question for us is what methodology should be used to design service area? And we approach this question by proposing optimization-based approaches for the design of transportation service areas. That's our contribution. That's what, what we will be presenting today. We will present problem formulations and heuristics that can be used to find good solutions to the problems of interest. Before I present our work, I would like to uh, discuss with you or to present related work. A related concept to the concept of a service area is, the, is coverage areas. By coverage areas, I mean areas of influence around a system component, for example, a bus stop. And coverage areas are commonly included in transit network design optimization models. For example, Mori proposed a set covering problem to find the locations of bus stops that maximize access to transit services. And other works have ext extended this type of models to consider operational efficiency and access equity in the selection of transit routes. So, Coverage area consideration is common when you're thinking about the design of your network if you want it to be accessible, for example. Service area design is also uh, has also been considered in the literature. For example, um, studies have proposed interior and mixed interior programming models to define service areas of taxi services. Usually in this type of models, the area of study is divided into, let's say, a grid, for example. And then the decision is where to include a cell within that grid as part of the service area of the taxi or the ride sharing service. This was done by uh, in 2008 and 2021 in studies that consider the service areas of pool ride hailing operators. In our case, we're interested in, instead of having a area of service or a study area divided into grids or some other regular geometric shape, 
and deciding if one of the cells or one of the components of that grid is part or not of the service area. We are interested in representations of the service area using geometric objects, essentially polygons. And the geometric shape, as we have seen in the case of the paratransit service area considerations in the US, are relevant and they also have been used in other type of design problems. For example, there have been a few studies that have considered geometric shapes for deciding the boundaries of cordon and area pricing schemes. So we are building on this literature by proposing a methodology that can be used to generally design service areas design in the context of paratransit and as I will show also micromobility. So let's uh, first present the problem formulations. Preliminaries, just the, the setup of what we're doing. We consider that there are decision makers that are interested in designing a transportation system such that a set of objectives are minimized. And these objectives could be, for example, reducing congestion, reducing air pollution, access inequality, etc. And we are generally interested in two types of decisions. The decision of the service area boundaries, which we will represent with an S, and the, the decisions of other design variables of the transportation systems, which we'll, we will generally represent with an X. So let's say that F is the set of all the objectives. We have omega, which represents the set of all acceptable service area boundaries. And then we have another set that represents all the values of X that can be assumed. The general design problem of interest is as follows. We want to design a set of objectives subject to system operational constraints and service areas constraints. which we can express as, in a general terms, as have, what I've shown on the right of this slide. Now, in the next slides, I will give more uh, specific formulations for two types of problems. The paratransit service area design problem and the micromobility service area design problem. Let's start with the paratransit service area design problem. Here, we consider that a transit agency's budget is usually divided across multiple types of services that meet the demands or the needs of multiple population groups. We are going to limit ourselves to, uh, to consider an agency that has or that must provide two services, fixed route bus service, which I will hereafter just refer to as the bus service, and the complementary paratransit service. And we are assuming that the agency wants to ensure that the services that it provides are efficient and they are equitable. The decision maker has three sets of variables that they must select. They must select the R variables we refer, which refer to the layout of routes for the fixed route bus network the F variables, which refer to the service frequency of each route in the network, and then the S, which represents the service area for the paratransit service. And we're also going to consider three objectives. The objective of minimizing inefficiency of the bus service operations, the objective of minimizing inefficiency in the paratransit service operation, and the objective of minimizing inequality, which we will, we will use as a proxy to the concept of equity, minimizing inequality in access to the transit services. And that measure will depend or will be a function of the transit network design variables R, F, and S. We also consider the following constraints, the constraints on the characteristics of the routes, for example, the maximum and minimum length of the routes, 
characteristics. They also have constraints on the characteristics of the root service frequencies, for example, the minimum and maximum frequencies. And we also consider the cost of operating the bus and paratransit service, which, which sum must be less than a given budget, which will, we will represent with age. So this is the general paratransit service area design program which just states that we want to minimize the efficiency of the bus operation, the inefficiency of the paratransit operation and inequality subject to system constraints. And the last constraint refers to the service area constraint. There is, there is a set of acceptable uh, shapes for the service area. There, the literature on transit network design is quite extensive and it's not our interest to provide new formulations, for example, the objective of bus inefficiency. This has been studied extensively for several years now. So what we will do is just to borrow previous work to specify the bus network, uh, bus network functions. And in this study, we use the work by FAN. But you will notice that neither the general problem formulations or the heuristics that we propose depend on the work of FAN. So in our experiments, we consider the following two objectives for efficiency or inefficiency. We want to minimize the weighted sum of the total bus user cost which is the first term, term in this expression. I think, I think I have a pointer here. Yes, first term, first term in the expression. And we also want to minimize the unmet demand. And then for the paratransit service, we want to only account for the unmet paratransit demand. The equity objectives it is, is defined in terms of spatial access that different population groups have to two types of transit services. And here we are using a, an inequality index that accounts for the distribution of access levels uh, between different groups. We are using the Atkinson index in this case. And uh, sigma here represents a measure of, measure or of spatial access to service M by group uh, G. These are standard uh, cost functions. Um, in this case, the first term is the cost of operating the bus service. And the second term simply presents the cost of operating the paratransit service, which in this case uh, depends on the average cost of the paratransit trip. Now, the constraint, which is perhaps one of the key, key contributions or key consideration of our work, the paratransit service area spatial constraint, as we mentioned, we consider that there is a minimum service area that must be provided around each route of the fixed route bus service. So whatever service area that we propose it must be contained by the buffer. That's what the B means. The buffer generated around the alignment of the routes, given a minimum uh, width of the service area. So in the case of the US, it will be 3 fourths of a mile with uh, uh, on, on each side of the on each side of the route. The, so that, that concludes the introduction of the paratransit service area design problem. Now I will present very briefly, since our main interest is the transit problem, but the micromobility service area design problem is very similar. In this case, we are considering the collaborative work of a dockless micromobility service operator and city planners who are interested in designing a service area for a micromobility service. 
And we assume that the operator wants to maximize profit and that the city wants to reduce congestion and ensure equitable access to the micro mobility service. And how do we operationalize this last statement? So we assume that the city has identified certain zones that contain or where people of disadvantaged groups live. And we say that any service area that is proposed for the micro mobility service Say, let's say that these, these zones, the special zones or the interest zones are side. We say that the service area must contain, or it should be the other way around, the, the, the service area must contain these zones, special zones. So we want to minimize the loss of profit and we want to minimize congestion subject to the requirement that the service area must contain the special zones the zones of interest that contain disadvantaged population groups so to formulate the objectives for this uh, this previous problem there are no standard uh, works that we could use but there are several approaches that could be used. For example, you could use activity-based models as we have done in previous work. For simplicity in the simulation of these studies, we assume that the decision makers have access to simple to evaluate models, such as surrogate models, to compute the objectives of the design problem. Now let's discuss the heuristic that we propose to solve this uh, design problems, this optimization problems. We're using genetic algorithm based uh, heuristics to solve the both of the problems. We propose two heuristics GAPSA, which refers to the genetic algorithm to solve the paratransit service area problem, and GAMSA, which refers to the genetic, genetic algorithm for the micromobility service area problem. Both have uh, similar strategies for generating candidate service area designs. Their main, main difference uh, is in the way that the initial population set or the initial designs are generated. In the using terminology of genetic algorithm, when, when I say population, I mean the group of candidate solutions for the design problem. Just, just in case um, you're not familiar with, with genetic algorithms, um, just a brief, very brief introduction. A genetic algorithm is an algorithm that iteratively modifies a population of designs or solutions using ideas from biological evolution. And we are interested in this type of algorithm because it's very flexible, it's, it's, it can be, it's adaptable. And that's relevant because we have a multi-objective, non-linear mixed integer optimization problem with constraints. And we are interested in providing an approach that can be applied regardless of the tools that a transit agency or a micromobility service operator has at his or her disposal. A key detail in the, the approach that we are proposing is that the service area is designed is represented as a polygon as a set of an, as an ordered set of vertices that are connected using lines this shape as we are presented here and the general idea behind the heuristic is that we implement operations that modify the boundary of the service area Note that the paratransit service area problem is essentially a root network design problem that incorporates paratransit service area considerations. Therefore, we are inspired or we, we adopt the strategy that FAM proposed for root network design in this work. And here we present the general heuristic for the joint, and note that, note that this is a joint design problem, we are jointly designing 
the routes, the frequency, and the service area of this bimodal transit service. And this heuristic GA, this will be the GA PSA, along with a bus network design problem heuristic, has two components. The component that designs the bus network, then a component that designs or optimizes the paratransit service area. So the first component you starts as follows. You generate an initial set of bus root networks. For each bus root network, you generate the minimum paratransit service area and compute the cost associated with that minimum paratransit service area. Given the remaining budget, you decide on the root frequencies, compute the objective functions and constraints. If the stopping criteria is met, you stop and then you continue on this step. If not, you continue optimizing and modifying the set of bus routes. Note that in this first step, you decide on the minimum paratransit service area coverage for each, each alternative bus route network. And for each design, you have three objectives. The objective of minimizing bus service inefficiency, minimizing paratransit service inefficiency, and minimizing inequality. After you're finished creating this set of routes, the second step, or second main step, is to optimize the, or to expand, I, I should say, to expand the minimum paratransit service area. So for each of the best designs in this stage, we expand, we create additions, additional designs for the paratransit area for each of the best root networks. And then for each expansion of the PSA, you generate, you compute the objective functional constraint. Assuming that this stopping criteria is not met, you generate new paratransit service areas using the crossover and mutation operations, which I will explain in the next slides. And so the idea is that you iteratively expand and contract, modify the paratransit service area for each of the best bus route networks in an attempt to optimize the three objectives given the constraints. So how do we generate the initial solutions in the GA PSA? So we use the idea of a buffer. As you recall, US regulations state that if you have a line, in this case, imagine that the root, bus root is the black line. If you have a root, you need to have a buffer of three fourths of a mile, for example. So the initial set of solutions, we, what we do is that we create buffers, expansions of uh, extending from the minimum coverage possible. So that will be the initial um, set of solutions that iteratively are modified using the crossover and mutation operations that I explained here. So what are the crossover operations or what is the crossover operation? Consider two paratransit service areas, A and B. And in this very simple case, you notice that the paratransit service area is oval shape. This one has a larger radius. And in this operation, you define a segment using some angles from a central a point, a centroid, a common angle or section from defined from a centroid. And then you swap all the vertices that are contained in that angle. You swap the vertices and then you create a third service area, which in this case would be the polygon. Note that these are polygons uh, in the C panel. And then after you're done with the crossover operation, you can also consider a mutation operation which given a boundary 
defines a region where the boundary, selected boundary, selected segment of the boundary can be either expanded, as in this case, or contracted. We use a grid approach. So the mechanics is as follows. We select two vertices in the service area boundary. Within those two vertices, we create or we generate a grid of points that allows us to identify the space that is either outside or inside the service area boundary. And using those points, we decide whether we want to expand or contract. So those, those are the two main operations that we implement in the GS, GA PSI. We generate an initial set of solutions, and then we iteratively expand, contract, adjust the polygons that represent the service area using the crossover and the mutation operations. These operations are applied uh, using probabilistic ideas. So with probability rho sub c, the crossover operation is performed. And with probability 1 minus rho sub c, only the mutation operation is performed. And if the crossover operation is performed, the mutation operation is also performed, but with probability rho sub c m. In each of these procedures discussed here, you have to dis decide which are the best designs in each iteration. And to do this, we apply the concepts presented by Deb et al. in the NSGA2 algorithm. So we use this to select the non-dominated non solutions in each iteration of our heuristic. The uh, heuristic for the micromobility problem is very similar. The, it uses also the mutation and crossover operations, but the main difference is how we generate the initial set of solutions. And to do this, we implement or we use the idea of a convex hull. So let me explain. The polygons here, the uh, red polygons, represent the zones, the city zones that contain the populations of interest. These are the zones that we want to ensure that are included in the micromobility service area because they contain historically disadvantaged co communities. So the initial or the base of the initial designs for the micromobility problem is to generate based on the vertices of these zones a convex hull, which is a polygon that contains all the other components, in this case vertices, of the polygons of interest. So this convex hull, this polygon, contains all the zones that we want to ensure that are within the series area. And every solution that we generate will contain at least this convex hull. In the initial procedure that we implemented, we generate an initial population by expanding and contracting and modifying this convex hull. And all feasible micromobility service areas, as I mentioned, contain the convex hull. So let me very briefly explain the tests that we conducted. We conducted some tests with the problems and the heuristics that we propose with the objective of illustrating the application of the design problems and the heuristics. And we also wanted to test the performance of the heuristics given different para parameter sets. So in this case, we considered two sets. And uh, we ran uh, trials. 10 trials per set, if my memory service serves me right, 10 trials per set to see how the uh, heuristics uh, perform. Note that set one 
ensures that the heuristic uses more mutation operations relative to set two. So just as a shorthand, so you understand the results in the next slides, set one uses more mutations operations that set two. The GAPSA, the design of the paratransit area was tested using as application setting the San Juan metropolitan area. We represented the road network of this region. And we use data from the US census to obtain demographic information so that we can have a basis for the um, activities that we included in the demand models that we use. We use demand models that consider fixed demand matrices and the assignments on the routes transit assignment, we, we use a logic-based transit assignment, a simple logic-based transit assignment. The figure here presents the bus zonal centroids that we use in the study. We only consider 100 uh, zonal centroids. And these are some of the parameters that we use in the study. This is the result for the GAPSA test as one would expect. In the right side, we see that the, these are the objective function values for the non-dominated solutions. And as one would expect, there is a trade-off naturally between the different objectives that we consider, which is, which is what is illustrated in this case. For example, the objectives with the lowest these are mean max scale values with the lowest inefficiency had also the relative to this population among the highest inefficiency in terms of of paratransit operation and equity and in this test the average result suggests that for the paratransit service area design not relying too much on the mutation operation is better Although this result also indicates that there are probably some greedier heuristics that we could have implemented to speed up the discovery of good solutions. And here I'm showing you uh, an example of among the best initial designs, service areas, how it ends up at the end of the GS, GAPSA operation just an illustration this is for the this is the best result or the let's say the design that has the minimum inefficiency in terms of the paratransit service objective which makes sense since we are interested in minimizing unmet paratransit demand what the algorithm did was to expand 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 nearly completely com uh, containing the study region of interest for the GA MSA macromobility problem, we use as the application setting the city of Maya West. And in this, which is represented here, this is the core of the city. We said that we had three special zones, which are real zones that the government has identified as special communities. And we are interested in designs that contains these special zones. And this is the result for this uh, the set of tests, the average results. And in contrast to the previous results for the, so this, as you notice in the, in the previous, the paratransit service area design, the heuristic performed best with the parameters of set one, but for the micro mobility test, the best performing uh, heuristic was the one that used the set two parameters. And I should say, I should have mentioned also in this case that we are judging how good a heuristic performs based on the percent change in dominated objective function space. I should have mentioned that previously. The same thing here in this in this graph. We're judging how, how much of an improvement, the uh, how quickly it improves the dominated objective function space. And this is an example of the best designs for the operator objective of 
maximizing maximizing um, maximizing profit and minimizing congestion these are the two best designs uh, focusing only on those two objectives naturally there are there are a set of non-dominated designs that balance fr from those two extremes which are, is shown here In this scatter point graph you see the initial point the black points are the initial designs and then the algorithm starts finding improvements on those initial designs until the maximum number of iterations are reached in both of the examples that are presenting the stopping criteria was maximum number of iterations which are, is a preset parameter set by the analyst so so some closing remarks we have pre presented optimization based approaches for the design of paratransit service area micromobility service area Not naturally these are methodologies that can inform the public discussion of service area design and they will be adjusted naturally based on the community's viewpoints and other stakeholders viewpoints but the idea is that you have an objective approach to generate candidate designs which can be discussed which, which can be improved with community input Future research could consider uh, the use of grittier heuristics. And you could also consider different types of contemporaneous situations. For example, you have an equity objective could be substituted to consider the situations that are faced, that agencies face when they are redesigning a service. That, those type of service, the situations you could be uh, considering a budget cut. If you're cutting the budget, maybe you're reducing the service area extension. And that creates a whole other set of considerations that could be considered in these type of problems. Also, another thing that could be considered in future research is that you could use surrogate optimization techniques to speed up the discovery of good designs, which has been shown to be effective in other types of transportation network design problems. We will be presenting in TRB this work, and we have a paper on the things that I, that I have discussed here. If you are interested, you can email me. You can email me at daniel rodriguez6 at upr.edu and i can share with you the paper i would like to acknowledge the support of the national institute for congestion reduction and we want to thank the micromobility operator scooter for their collaboration in this work and now i'm open to questions daniel thank you so much uh, for the very informative presentation on on your research project um, I will um, get to a quick reminder on how to ask a question. So that Q&A box is located in the bottom right hand um, corner of your screen. Simply type in any questions or comments you have and we'll read those aloud and we'll get a response. So uh, Daniel, the first question comes in and says, can you please explain more uh, the role of equity in the model? Sure. Uh, equity comes in in two components of the model in the objective and the constraints. So let, let me go back to the general problem. And let, let me focus on the transit paratransit problem. In this case, we consider equity in the objective, E objective, which we formulate as a index in, in our particular uh, simulations, which uh, formulate as an inequality index. We want to minimize inequality in access to the transit services. So in our experiments, access uh, was defined in the terms of, for the bus service, for example, how close 
are how many people are within three fourths of a mile from the uh, root alignments, for example. And for paratransit, is the same consideration, but considering the whole service area. So in this type of model, we assume that there's a, the agency has a criteria for, for defining what access is. And that criteria, which is what I presented here, can be used, sigma, that criteria can be used to compute an inequality index, which you want to minimize. In this particular case, the Atkinson index, if you ask the lower the value is, the more equal the distribution of access is. The second way that we consider equity is in the constraints for in so in the case of the micro mobility example we say that the city is interested in including this is only special inclusion in including a set of city regions neighborhoods zones etc these zones that have for example economically disadvantaged groups must be within the micro mobility service area and then we ensure, as in the case that I presented for Mayagüez, we ensure that the algorithm always, always, always contains these zones, which I'm going to show here. So in this case, the red polygons are the communities that are historically disadvantaged. And then the algorithm only generated feasible polygons, service areas, which contains those two, those zones. Okay, Daniel, the next question says, uh, oh, that, that person said thank you. So thank you for the answer to the question. Um, the you. second question comes in, says, could you analyze travel time isochrones as a polygon in a similar way? That's a very interesting concept. I, I think you could, you could, you could, use it as a as a measure of accessibility that's a very interesting and since the isochrones are polygons too there's probably some very interesting operations that you could include in the algorithms that explicitly account for the travel time isochromes i, I think that's a great idea that i had not considered before okay um, in the future research area, you had talked about greedier heur heuristics. So could you give us a sense of, of what uh, could constitute as a greedier heuristic? Yeah. So this algorithm goes, let me show you the, the algorithm. It goes in order, it says for each of the best routes, optimize the paratransit service area and then you have a lot of activity here then i'm moving my mouse but i don't think you're seeing what i'm let me see in this in this algorithm you are evaluating many 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 possible designs for a particular bus route network but perhaps it will be more efficient to first do a trial let's say you evaluate for each bus route five quickly uh, five buffers for each of the routes and then you can quickly perhaps identify where there's more potential for improvement by uh, doing a an initial check quick check on all the alternative bus routes instead of what we did here which is that we first consider a bus route, then we spend hundreds, thousands of operations, evaluations of designs, and then we move to the next bus route. And perhaps we wasted a lot of time improving, optimizing a paratrusted service area, which we shouldn't have. Maybe after a few, after a few evaluations, we could have uh, realized that it, it, it didn't make a lot of sense to continue optimizing the service area. So that, that could be a very simple way that you can speed up the operation of these algorithms to, to 
do a initial flyover, an initial check on each service area. And then on the most promising ones, you, you say, okay, these most promising ones, we will spend a lot of time improving them. Okay, and it looks like we have one final question. It says, the MSA results presented showed a spiky service area. Is it correct to say that the result would be impractical in practice? Uh, let me show this. It's in the micromobility result. So if you notice here, this, which I mentioned is one of the best designs according to the congestion reduction objective. They had a spike here that obviously, I mean, if you present this to a community, they will they will laugh at that spike because it's kind of crazy that you you say, okay, so only these people here can can use the the service. And it's probably impractical because this doesn't really consider if there's a road that can give you that type of access. So yeah, if this was the final design, it would be impractical. And there, so what, what can we do so, to, so that we can prevent impractical results such as this one? A very simple thing would be to include a constraint in this type of problem. So here we add another constraint on the related to the convexity or the spikiness of the service area design. I think that uh, this has been done before and, and it will, con will prevent the generation of this type of impractical spikes. It will, and it's, it's quite, it's quite uh, inexpensive, computationally speaking, to compute this type of, of indices, is convexity or smoothness, smoothness index. That would be a simple approach to to consider or to eliminate spiky type of results. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. Um, so what I would like to do is say thank you so much, Daniel, for the great presentation and all of the great questions that were submitted. Um, just as a quick reminder, um, we do not have any additional um, nicer webcasts for the remainder of this calendar year. Uh, but we will be back in early 2023 uh, for a host of new uh, webinars. So do stay connected to the NICER uh, website um, and or get registered um, on um, our up or subscribe to our upcoming uh, newsletters so you can stay uh, informed of all of our upcoming events. Um, I have opened up the evaluation. Again, thank you so much uh, for attending today's webinar and we'll see you in 2023. Bye everybody. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.